The little one sleeps in the cradle. I lift the gauze and look for a long time and silently brush away flies with my hand. The youngster and the red-faced girl turn aside up the bushy hill. I, I peeringly view them from the top. The suicide sprawls on the bloody floor of the bedroom. I witness the corpse with its dappled hair and note where the pistol has fallen. The blab of the pave, tires of carts, slough of boot soles, the talk of the promenaders, the heavy omnibus, the driver with his interrogating thumb, the clank of the shod horses on the granite floor, snow sleighs, plinking, shouted jokes, the pelts of snowballs, the hurrahs for popular favors, the, the fury of the roused crowd, the flap of the curtain litter, the sick man is inside, borne away to the hospital, the meeting of enemies, the sudden oaths, the blow, the fall, the policeman with his star working his passage to the center of the crowd, the impassive stones that receive and return so many echoes. What groans from overfed and half starved who fall down sunstruck or in fits? What exclamations by women taken suddenly who hurry home and give birth to babes? What living and buried speech is always vibrating here? Arrests of criminals, slights, adulterous offers made, acceptances, rejections with convex lips. I mind them or the show or resonance of them. I come and I depart. The big door of the country barn stands open and ready. The dried grass of harvest time loads the slow drawn wagon. The clear light plays in the brown, green and gray interchanged. The armloads are packed to the sagging mouth. I'm there too, I help. I came stretched atop of the load. I felt it soft jolts, one leg reclining upon the other. I jump from the crossbeams and seize the timothy and clover and tumble head over heels and tangle my hair for a wisp. The butcher boy takes off his killing clothes or sharpens his knife in a stall by the marketplace. I loiter and join his repartee, his shuffle and breakdown. Blacksmiths with grimed and hairy chest in buying the anvil. They're all out. There's great heat in the fire. From the cinder strewed doorway, I follow their movements. The light shear of their waist plays even with their massive arm. Overhand the hammer swing, overhand so slow, so sure. They do not hasten. Each man hits in his place. The Negro that drives the long dray of the stone yard, steady and tall, he stands poised on one leg on the string piece. His blue shirt exposes his ample neck and breast and, and loosens over his hip band. His glance is calm and commanding. He tosses the slouch of his hat away from his forehead. The sun falls on his crispy beard and mustache, falls on the black of his polished and perfect limbs. I behold the picturesque giant and love him and do not stop there. I go with the team as well. In me, the caresser of life, wherever moving, backward as well as forward slewing, the niches aside and junior bending, not a person or object missing. 